Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Super Mario RPG. In the last part we went through Smitty's factory, made it all the way here to the Switch before the final boss. And before we head on into it, let's take a look at what everyone's looking like. Uh, only Gino reached level 30 though again, if you want to and you're around these experience levels, you can easily make it up to level 30 by just grinding off the machine-made Yaradovich's a few screens ago. And in terms of the equipment I'm bringing into the final battle, Mario and Peach are essentially unchanged. The only difference I'm making here is I'm changing out the Trooper Pin and its automatic attack boost and speed boost for the Jinx Belt, because it's just more preferable in this situation. With that said, though, let's also take a look at my inventory really quick. Nothing's really changed here from the last part, just in the case you need to see what it looks like. There we go. Power Blasts are really important. Rock Candies could come in handy, although I don't think I- I think I only use one of them, if even. Let's head on over and finish this mess. I'm not sure if it's actually possible to have this claw get here faster, like depending on where, when you hit the button and such. That seems like something you could theoretically do. <laughs> hey! There's the last star piece! Huh? Already finished your tour of the factory, huh? Alright then. How about a little demonstration? Yo, Smithy! Stop making those things and hand over the star piece. Now! Huh? <laughs> so you're Mario. Looks like we're gonna have a little dispute over the star. Just head it over and get out of my castle! My, my, we're a little touched today, aren't we? You know, I'm actually growing rather fond of this place. Please, don't make us go through any more. Just give us the star, now! Hmph, <laughs> better yet. Why don't you give me your stars? Why, then I could easily conquer this world. Then we could get rid of all the wishes and create a world filled with weapons. Over here, now! I'll crush you all! Final boss time, but Smithy isn't exactly alone. He, with him, he has his smelter, which is the thing we want to target first. The smelter has 1500 HP, weak against thunder, immune to fire, and all status ailments. And it has a chance to, if given enough turns, summon a Shiper, which is the last sort of enemy in the game. 400 HP, weak, uh, immune to all status ailments. Uh, I think it has sword range as an attack, which can do some decent damage. But otherwise, all that's between us in the end is Smithy here. We actually want to start off by using a power blast with Peach, because then we can have our attack boosted on everyone with one turn. And we do want to take out that uh, smelter rather quickly. Though admittedly, with the strategy I'm using, taking out the smelter before I can spawn a Shiper is at times up to luck. I openly admit it also depends on whether or not you decide to attack with Peach over, say, like, using Group Hug after Meteor Swarm, which is recommendable, because that hurts a lot. Rock Candy is actually a pretty good idea with her as well, just because you'll deal 300 damage to both the Smelter and Smithy. As for Smithy himself, though, he has 2,000 HP, Sledge, Meteor Swarm, and Mega Drain. I usually only see him use Swarm and, uh, a Sledge and Meteor Swarm often, though. Immune to all status ailments. Sledge is probably the thing you'll see more often than not, however you should fear uh, Meteor Swarm more, just do its outright higher damage. Once we take care of the Shipers that can spawn though, the fight becomes fairly straightforward, because as we're already attack boosted, all we really have to do to take him down in quick uh, circumstances is to physically attack him. Rock Candies are also useful though with Peach because you'll get more damage out of them than you likely will with her just her standard uh, physical attack, at least consistently. Jump, though, is still Mario's best bet, even over physical attacks with the lazy shell, just because you spent the entire game grinding that ability up, or at least the first two-thirds of it, roughly. It's gonna be your main damage dealer. Also, I love the fight music here. The, 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 the final air th songs in the game, be it Barrel of Volcano, The Factory, or the final boss tunes, are great stuff. 
Also, if you can't tell where the star piece is, it's actually on his chest. I, it took me years to realize that that star is supposed to be the star piece. I don't know why. No! Calm down, Smitty. Your head looks like a geyser. Don't get so worked up. Think of your blood pressure. We just built this yesterday! And the foundation's very weak! So stop shaking the floor! How utterly annoying! Huh? What the? How in the heck? Okay, yeah, that is a fairly weak foundation. Makes you wonder how he didn't accidentally do this just by hitting the smith. Uh, the forge, rather. Oh, that's a creepy background. No! <sighs> I'm burning, seething. Never have I been so wronged. It is time. I will show you my real form. I will show you my true power. I will teach you respect. And I shall have my revenge. No! Come on, you puny ants. All right, Smithy's final form is split up into two things, the head and the body. The, he the body has 1,000 HP immune to all status ailments. However, I've never outright targeted it because it's not worth targeting. The thing we need to kill is the head. And the head has, I believe, 8,000 HP. However, there's more than one head. It starts off in that round one, but that's just there to morph into its other heads, like the tank. The tank head, it has extraordinarily powerful physical attacks and high physical defense. However, it's also weak to thunder and that doesn't have the best magic defense, so thus you're just going to be using that more or less. In terms of the other heads it has, uh, Smithy has rather, there are two we basically don't see. One is the safe head, which looks kind of like a coffin. Uh, that has shredder and recover for its abilities, so and that's why uh, you want to bring more than one power blast to this, even though you actually want to reestablish power blast at the start of this part of the fight because it needs reestablishing. Uh, the mask head is weak against ice, immune to jump, fire, thunder, and all status ailments. The mask head, by the way, specializes in high defense. Then there's the magic head, which kind of looks like if a wizard was his head. Uh, that has the most powerful magic attacks in the game, but weak defense. I don't think it has a actual elemental weakness. Uh, in fact, I think it's immune to all magic, basically, uh, except for maybe jump. And it has, I think, boulder, sword rain, spear rain, arrow rain, meteor swarm, and dark star. So that is a fearsome stage to be for sure. But perhaps the one you want to see more often than not, uh, aside from the tank form, which I think he always starts with the tank form in my experience, there is the treasure chest head form, which is weak to fire, but immune to thunder and all status ailments. The thing with that phase is that he doesn't have any particularly high or low magic defense or attack and physical defense and all that get jazz. But what his specialty is in the treasure chest head phase, he'll attack the entire party with a random status ailment. Essentially, the chest will open up, you'll see a minor bit of a roulette go on, it'll land on, say, like a scarecrow or what looks like a bomb with, with a skull and crossbones on it, that means it'll either scarecrow you or poison you. You want to see the tank in that phase the most because they are the most easily damaged. In fact, they're the only two he really uses. Uh, in both my this run, my practice run, and even my two failed recordings of this boss fight, which was failed mostly due to technical issues, I openly admit, and me being curious about the slowdown, he only used the tank in the treasure chest head. I have had playthroughs where he cycles through all four quite regularly, and uh, he's pretty annoying when he does that, but for some reason, in this fight, he just liked to stay with two heads at most. And that's what poison things look like. Uh, your main strategy for this, though, is to adapt to the heads. Mario should be jumping unless it's the magic head, in which case he should be physically attacking. Mallow should be physically attacking unless it's the tank head, in which case he should be using the shocker. Peach is more or less just going to be your healer this fight, honestly. Uh, I guess if you have an opportunity and everyone's at high enough health, you could use stuff like Psych Bomb, but on the whole, Smithy is threatening, yes, but Culex is harder. Gah! 
the b body and head are burning. It's not possible. I don't believe it. I'm finished. Done for. God, no. There it is. Come on, Mario. Send the last one way up high. And that's the last star piece. We've been getting these since our second visit to Mushroom Kingdom. Way back, and I believe that was part two. God, we, we've come a long way. Also, it's oddly fitting for Mario game that the last star is yellow. Oh, I can't seem to get off of this screen. I wonder why. Oh, they're collecting all the power of the Piper animals, apparently. Thank you, everyone. The Star Road is back to normal, and... Gino? You gonna finish that sentence, buddy? Send them back up there? How are you gonna get back up there, man? Mind you, I guess he did kind of jump into the puppet back in Rose Valley without the stars, didn't he? Not even giving us a goodbye.
just wanted to be silent there for that song. I, I love that song so much. The end of the game really brings some of the best of the music. Luigi! There you are! I named the, the file after you in part one! Where you been, man? Either way, that's Super Mario RPG The Legend of Seven Stars. It's a really good game! I don't think it's a perfect game by any stretch of the imagination. I think the battle mechanics are a good structure, but I think the games that would come after this, be it Paper Mario with its badge system, or uh, Mario & Luigi with its brother's system, would make it just the right complexity amount over this, because this game is simple, yes, and I know I've said simplicity sells, but there's something about this game that always just wasn't as interesting to me as games like Gold and Stone or the Mario & Luigi and Paper Mario games. Maybe it's because I started with those. However, I have to say, the writing for the characters is great, the music is fantastic, and the character interactions are good when the characters actually interact. Uh, my, my biggest complaint with the game's writing is, yeah, Peach, Mario, and Bowser have their funny moments because they're established characters, and Mallow gets a lot through the game, but Gino? Gino gets basically nothing for his characters you go through. He has that cutscene when you meet him at in uh, the forest maze, and a couple of more or less one-liners throughout the game. He does not say or do much in the storyline, and uh, for essentially the soldier from the stars, I think that's a bit of a missed opportunity. Uh, and the other major character complaint is actually with the villains. Because this game suffers a bit from what I call Golden Sun Sy Syndrome in a way, where you know what the main plot always is, it's always to get the star pieces and, get and defeat Smithy, yes. But Smithy gets zero screen time until the very end of the game. Yeah, his weapon goons are always there, but otherwise, it's nothing. The game relies on the individual area plots to try and not pad the game out, but try to give every area its own little personality. And I can, I can admire that. But uh, as an RPG, I think it falls flat on its face with a villain due to that. Uh, mind you, I also judge most RPGs and villain screen time off of Golbez, because Golbez is just a really good villain in terms of how they use him. Uh, if you want to play this, thankfully you're in luck, because there are a good amount of ports. There's the original Super Nintendo version. Good luck finding a cheap copy and box manual, by the way. Uh, it's on most of the virtual consoles, although I think by the time this gets uploaded, even, I think I mentioned this in a couple of previous playthroughs, uh, the virtual console on Wii, I think, is completely unavailable by the time this gets uploaded. 3DS, I believe it's available there, and I think same with Wii U. Uh, one thing I will say about this game, though, is that I think it hits one note completely right, uh, that similarly... Mar uh, Superstar Saga and Thousand Year Door in particular hit really well. I think these are really good RPGs to start someone off in the genre with. They do enough that's similar to other games in the genre to be recognizable and to grow off from there, but it does its own thing to be charming enough that if you're not a big fan of the RPG mechanics, you can still play the game and have fun and probably not return to the, to the entirety of the genre later on. Uh, say, so say like if you have a kid that you want to introduce to RPGs or a friend who's not that into them that you want to try and say, hey, give this one a shot, see if you like it. This is one of them. I do think Superstar Saga and Thousand Year Doors are better examples of that. Uh, same with even the first Golden Sun. But I think this is a very strong enough entry for something like that. It's not a game I go back to often. Uh, heck, there's only two Mario RPGs I go back to less than this, and those are Partners in Time, just to be not liking it, and... Uh, Sticker Star counts, although it really shouldn't. Ugh. But uh, with this, I think I'm done with the Mario universe for a little while. Because, uh, let's see, counting the, I think, four parts of Mario USA, was it? Or was it three? Either way, some amount. That's about 20 videos of Mario straight. That's that's enough for one time. Uh, I have no idea what I'm going to do next, as usual. It's going to be as impromptu as it usually is, but... I hope you look forward to it. And I, I thank you guys for watching, because I did have a lot of fun with this game. Uh, I did some things different than I usually do, like uh, I decided not to use the Super Suit because I usually use that when I'm playing myself. Uh, I also tend to use Geno a bit more in some of my other playthroughs because he can be good with his Geno Whirl or his other really good attacks like Geno Blast and such. But I decided to stick with some characters I don't use as much, like Mallow, comparatively for this, and I think it worked out pretty well. Poor Bowser, though, still didn't get used too much. <laughs> hey, Geno. Saying goodbye one last time because we'll never see you again aside from that brief cameo in Superstar Saga. Yeah, me too, bud. 
I, I do wonder, because if I recall correctly, Paper Mario was originally in development as a sequel to this. How they would have fleshed out what that character, what happened to that character and such. Because it, it would have been interesting to see what they could have done with that. Mind you, then there was the whole Sony heading over to PlayStation for the N64 generation thing, and yeah. Either way, what we're coming up on now is the fireworks scene. Depending on the amount of fireworks you bought throughout the game at Moleville, for 500 coins each, you can only have one in your inventory at a time, by the way, the upcoming graphic changes. If you've got none, it just goes right to the, the end sequence, essentially. If you bought one, you're going to get a mushroom-shaped firework. Three equals a fire flower, and five or more results in... a nice little star. Obviously, 2,500 coins could probably be put towards much better things, but at the same time, during the latter half of the game, money becomes such an easy thing to find that it, you almost have nothing else to spend it on. That's still, it, it, it's cute. Also, I, I love this credits theme. Again, the end of the game hams it in with great music. However, every good RPG must come to an end. One last thing, though, if you leave the end screen on long enough, because this is one of those that is on until you reset the console, you get a pretty nice little calming, almost music box-like remix of the Mario Brothers 1 theme. And I'm going to leave uh, like a minute at the end of the video just so you can listen to it. It's a really calming piece. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great night. Take care. And I'll see you guys next Let's Play, whatever that may be. See you guys then.